Over the past few weeks, tons of Smash Ultimate majors have been going down across the world. LMBM, a super major, Umabura SP10, a premier tournament, and Kowloon 9 with Sumabato, another super major. There's been so much spotlight on the big boys and the heavy hitters that when Cafeteria Cup went down, it wasn't seen as a huge deal. But let me tell you, huge deal it very much was. Cafeteria Cup was a B-tier tournament, aka a national, and it was sort of an impromptu summit, containing very talented Japanese players, as well as some of the international competitors visiting Japan, like Zamba, Apollo Kage, Gluttony, and more. Who would take home the goal? Well, seeing as there's only 16 competitors, today we'll be going over every single player at Cafeteria Cup seeing how they did in bracket, and eventually going over who would take home the title of lunchtime champion. Just a reminder before we begin that if you want to support me monetarily, you can do so by using the links to my Patreon or channel memberships in the description below. With that out of the way, let's get started with our 13th place finishers. Our first 13th place finisher is Natoru, the only player in the entire tournament to not have a VOD that was put on VGBC, which is why the overlay here is different than some of the other VODs, because it's from the side stream. Natoru, the 14th seed, unfortunately went 0-3 in his pool, losing to Ashimo, Neo, and Base Mage, all while only taking a game off of Neo. This meant that Natoru started final bracket from losers, and even though he would lose to Jogibu, it was only barely, putting up a good game 5 fight, but sadly losing it in the end for 13th. Unfortunately, Natoru would have to leave the hopes of the French dimension to Gluttony. Our next 13th place finisher is Naucha, a Japanese Diddy Kong main who made it into the Invitational via a last chance qualifier. Entering the tournament as the 15th seed, Naucha went 1-2 and two in pools, losing to Ouch and Zamba, but taking a Game 5 set over Atelier, a set that will be entirely recontextualized by the end of this video. Still, Naucha started final bracket from losers and, just like Natoru, would lose his first set in a close Game 5, this time versus Takara, barely losing for a final placement of 13th. For the one player that was perhaps the biggest unknown for many spectators and competitors, Naucha managed to take a set from Atelier, which again, will be viewed entirely differently by the end of this video. Next up is Samuel, a Canadian Steve main who is THE TO for the Battle of BC series, who was brought in to replace fellow Canadian Machu who unfortunately couldn't make it. Samuel came into the event as the 16th and therefore last seed. Samuel would end up going 0-3 in pools but did end up bringing Senra to a 5th decisive game but unfortunately didn't win it. Starting final bracket from losers, Samuel would lose to fellow Canadian Ouch 3-0 for a final placement of 13th. While Samuel was a TO, brought in as a replacement, somehow he didn't feel out of place here at this Invitational with all of these other players, and I think that says quite a lot. And our last 13th place finisher, as much as it pains me to say it, is Cosmos. Coming into the event as the 12th seed, Cosmos would go 0-3 in pools, meaning that the only 13th place finisher to actually win a set was Naocha. Either way, losses to AK, Kanaji, and a Game 5 versus Jogibu meant that Cosmos started final bracket in losers, where he'd lose 3-0 to Ashimo for a final placement of 13th. Now, to be perfectly honest with you all, I think having to fight Ashimo for last place was probably the worst draw that anyone at this tournament ended up getting. But it is what it is, I guess. Now we move on to our ninth place finishers, meaning that these four didn't quite breach top 8. And while you will see some expected names here, you are all going to be shocked about some of these ninth place finishes if you hadn't heard about them already. Our first ninth place finisher is Jogibu, the Captain Falcon main. Coming into the event as the fourth seed, Jogibu had a volatile pool, as even a pair of Game 5 wins over Kanaji and Cosmos couldn't save Jogibu from starting final bracket in losers after losing to AK 3 0. And yeah, one set loss meant that Jogibu started in losers. It was a fierce pool. In final bracket, Jogibu defeated Neitoru, like we mentioned earlier, before losing to Senra 3 0 for a final placement of ninth. This was a shocking upset, as prior to this, Jogibu was up 9-0 lifetime over Senra. I guess no one beats Senra 10 times in a row. Our next 9th place finisher is Takara, the world's best Ken who came into the event as the 8th seed. Takara went 1-3 in pools, defeating Samuel but also losing to Gluto and Senra. In final bracket, Takara defeated Naucha in a game 5 set before losing to Apollo Kage 3-1 for a final placement of 9th as the 8th seed. And to be honest, AK was in losers pretty dang early, so this isn't a bad loss by any means. 
Our next ninth place finisher is Base Mage, which is cool because this is the first big tourney where we can compare the results of the two best puffs in the entire world, Senra and Base Mage. They've both attended the same tournament before, but the results haven't really been comparable. This time, however, with a smaller bracket and an invitational, it's a much more direct and straightforward comparison. Base Mage came into the event as the 11th seed and went 2-1 in pools, losing to Neo but defeating Neitoru and amazingly Ashimo. This upset win versus Ashimo is why the world's best Ryu started final bracket in losers, by the way. Well, technically it was half of why, but we'll get there later. Base Mage is the first person we're covering today to enter final bracket from winners, but unfortunately he'd lose his first match, 3-0 versus Kanaji in winners quarters, dropping down into losers. Once here, Base would lose 3-1 to Ouch for a final placement of 9th. Even though he didn't make top 8, Base Mage got one of the biggest upsets of the entire tournament, so in my mind it's hard to call it a bad performance. And now it's time for perhaps the biggest shock of the entire tournament, or perhaps second biggest. That's because, dear viewers, our last ninth place finisher is Gluttony. That's right. Of the three large tournaments that Gluto entered in Japan, he missed out on top eight not once, but twice. Let's talk about how. Gluttony came into the event as the first seed and started off the weekend by sweeping pools flawlessly, although he did go game five with Senra, but clutched it out in the end. However, once he entered final bracket from winner's side, Gluttony would lose his first set in a 3-0 loss to Atelier's Pokemon Trainer. And then, right after this, Gluttony would lose a Game 5 Nailbiter set to Ashimo for a final placement of 9th as the first seed. Just like Cosmos, having to fight Ashimo anywhere outside of the top 8 is a killer, especially as this set in any other tournament could have been grands. And unfortunately for Gluttony, after suffering that huge upset loss versus Atelier, he got extremely unlucky and had to fight a white-hot Ashimo. And now, we're down to only 8 players remaining, the players who proved to be a cut above the pact. Coming in from winner's side was Atelier, Kanaji, Zamba, and Neo. And coming in from loser's side was Apollo Kage, Senra, Ouch, and Ashimo. Of these players, the next one to fall would unfortunately be Ouch. Ouch came into the event as the 7th seed, and although seeded to make it out of pools through winners, this was not to be. That's because, despite defeating Naucha 3-1, Ouch would lose to Zamba as well as an upset loss to Atelier, starting final bracket from losers. Ouch defeated Samuel and Base Mage, like previously discussed, to make it into top 8, where, just like Cosmos and Gluttony before him, he'd lose to Ashimo in the middle of a white-hot losers run for a final placement of 7th as the 7th seed, matching it exactly. Still, Ouch should be proud for not only repping Wolf, but repping Canada within this top 8. Our other 7th place finisher is the other Jigglypuff within this tournament, the one and only Senra. Coming into the event as the 9th seed, Senra defeated Takara and Samuel, as mentioned earlier, before losing a close Game 5 set versus Gluttony. This meant that Senra entered final bracket from winner's side, but would unfortunately lose in winner's quarters to Zamba, dropping down into losers and defeating Jogibu for the first time ever to make it into top 8. However, once here, Senra would lose in a close Game 5 set versus Apollo Kage for a final placement of 7th as the 9th seed. Senra not only outperformed his seed, but outperformed Base Mage, continuing to make his case as the best puff in the world, though he's not there quite yet. Now, we're down to our top 6, and much to the dismay of many, it's time that Ashimo's insane losers run came to an end. Ashimo came into the event as the third seed and suffered a pair of upsets in pools, losing to Base Mage and Neo, despite beating Neitoru. This meant that Ashimo was in losers incredibly early, and as we've covered earlier, Ashimo would go on to defeat Cosmos and Gluttony, gatekeeping both players from top 8 with an insanely unlucky bracket pull. In top 8, Ashimo would defeat Ouch before unfortunately losing in losers quarterfinals to Neo, the same player who upset him in pools, this time losing in a close game 5 set for a final placement of 5th after going on the best losers run of the entire tournament. Our next 5th place finisher is actually going to be Kanaji. Now, if you don't know who Kanaji is, you really should. 
While he may not be the best player in Australia, Kanaji is the only player in Australia who's making waves in other countries. Or, well, I guess other continents too, technically. He's a Snake and Shulk co-main who came into the event as the 13th seed, starting off the weekend by losing a close game 5 set to Jogibu, but then defeating both Cosmos and Apollo Kage 3-0, with the win over AK being especially amazing as it was done in Shulk Snake, seen as Shulk's worst matchup by a country mile. Starting final bracket from winners, Kanaji first defeated Base Mage 3-0 to make it into top 8 from winner's side. However, once here, Kanaji would lose back-to-back -back sets, first to Atelier 3-0 in winner's semis, and then dropping into loser's quarters and losing the run back versus Apollo Kage in a close game 5 set for a final placement of 5th as the 13th seed. With this, Kanaji reps Australia more so than any other player right now, and perhaps makes a case as one of the best shulks emerging in 2024. Only time will tell. And then, there were four. The two players meeting in winner's finals were Zamba and Atelier, and the two players meeting in loser's semis were Apollo Kage and Neo. Of these four, the next one to go would end up being Apollo Kage. AK, as the fifth seed, made it through pools quite well, losing to Kanaji 3-0 but defeating both Cosmos and Jogibu to make it out on winner's side. However, in winner's quarters, AK would ironically enough lose to Neo, dropping into losers and going on a pretty good losers run, the second best of the tournament. On the way to losers semis, AK defeated Takara 3-1, Senra 3-2, and won the run back versus Kanaji in yet another 3-2. However, AK wouldn't be able to win the other run back versus Neo, losing in loser semi-finals 3-0 for a final placement of 4th as the 5th seed. Ironically enough, AK only lost winning matchups this tournament, as Snake is seen as Shulk's worst matchup and one of Korin's worst matchups as well. Let me tell you, AK, I know that feeling all too well. And now, we're left with three. Neo sitting squarely in loser's finals, and Zamba versus Atelier being our winner's finals. Instead of going over who the next one out is, let's actually go over their bracket paths all together first. After all, thinking back on it, I never even mentioned how Neo got into losers in the first place, and going over all three of them will allow the finale to be a bit more climactic. Let's start with Neo, the player who's already in losers. Neo had come into the event as the number 6 seed, and ended up sweeping pools, though not flawlessly. Neo defeated Ashimo, Neitoru, and Base Mage all in 3-1 set victories to make it out of pools on winner's side. And although Neo would defeat Apollo Kage 3-1 in winner's quarters, making it into top 8 from winners, he'd lose 3-1 in winner's semifinals to Zamba. Now in losers, Neo would put an end to Ashimo's legendary losers run before also defeating AK to make it into losers finals. Zamba, who we just mentioned, came into the event as the second seed, starting off the weekend by getting through pools, only dropping any games versus Atelier, which went to a game 5. Starting final bracket from winners, Zamba would first defeat Senra in a quick 3-0 set victory to make it into top 8 from winner's side. Once in top 8, Zamba would defeat Neo in a 3-1 victory to make it into winner's finals versus Atelier. Atelier is THE breakout story from Cafeteria Cup. Though Atelier is a veteran of Japanese Smash, the Wolf PT co-main has been in a bit of a slump lately. That all ended at Cafeteria Cup, however. Seemingly disregarding the Wolf entirely, Atelier went almost all PT, and let me tell you, it worked wonders for him. Coming into the event as the 10th seed, all three of his pool sets went to a game 5, defeating Ouch but losing to Zamba and also losing to last place finisher Naucha. I told you that set would be recontextualized later on. Despite this, because this pool was as fierce as a pit of lions, Atelier still made it into final bracket from winner's side. Once there, Atelier had to go up versus Gluttony, and not only did he beat Gluto, he did it dominantly. 3-0-ing the French warrior with his Pokemon trainer in order to make it into top 8 from winner's side. This was absolutely the biggest upset of the entire tournament, but Atelier wasn't even done yet. This is because, after making top 8, Atelier would also defeat both Kanaji's Snake and his Shulk in another dominant 3-0 to make it all the way into winner's finals. And now, finally, we've gone over all three of our final finishers. Zamba and Atelier faced off in winner's finals, having gone game 5 all the way back in pools. However, this time, the set wouldn't get that far, as Zamba defeated Atelier in a 3-1 set victory to move on into grand finals from winner's side and send Atelier down into losers to face off versus Neo, who had just got done defeating Ashimo and Apollo Kage, the two best losers runs of the tournament. And although Neo's tournament so far had been a return to form for the Japanese Korin, with a very impressive set of wins, seemingly 
nothing could stop the real breakout star of Cafeteria Cup, Atelier, who dominantly took the set in a quick 3-0, and moving on into Grand Finals from loser's side as the 10th seed. It was now time for Grand Finals, Zamba vs Atelier. This was the third time that these two had fought at this tournament. The first time, in pools, it had gone Game 5, being 3-2. The second time was in winner's finals where it had been 3-1, and this time, you guessed it, it became even less close, with Zamba defeating Atelier 3-0 in grand finals. With a Zombear to close out the set, Atelier was eliminated at second place as the 10th seed and Zamba became your champion of Cafeteria Cup as the second seed. Many people know of Zamba's Invitational Curse, that curse being that every time Zamba is close to qualifying for an Invitational, he always comes up just one place short. Well, today, we might have found out why, as it seems like the first big Invitational Zamba actually takes part in, he won it, and to be frank, easily. I mean, he was only taken to a decisive Game 5 once versus Atelier in pools. It seems that if Zamba does get the chance to be in an Invitational, he may become a beast, the likes of which we can only fathom. But not to discredit the other players here, this tournament saw lots of hype moments and insane storylines. Kanaji beating AK and Shulk Snake and placing 5th, Neo returning to his form, Ashimo's insane losers run, and Senra outplacing Base Mage to make top 8. Not to mention the pinnacle of it all, Atelier, making one of the greatest comebacks from a slump we've ever seen, with wins over lots of talented players including Gluttony. But don't forget, Atelier did drop a set to the last place finisher Naocha in pools. Yeah, that set feels very different now that you have the rest of the story, doesn't it? Only time will tell if Atelier will match this stellar performance in other tournaments, but I for one hope he does, and that this is the dawn of a new Pokemon trainer GOAT, cause let me tell ya, we desperately need one. As far as Japan goes, many people like to complain that Japanese majors are lame or boring, especially with the character pool. But here, at Cafeteria Cup, we were treated to a tournament that was anything but boring. I hope we get to see many more just like it. That's going to be it for today's video. Before I go, shout out to my patrons Seth Laster, Fausco333, Logan S, Percy Palm, Wawa, and my tier 2 members Iltis and Diamond Blaze. Additionally, shout out my YouTube members Storm Tripper, Loco Soko, Diarrhea, Dicho Jr., Defective, Orangabang, Fana, Boston R, Iltis, and my tier 2 members Mike G and Wu Tang Forever. Lastly, extra special thanks to my tier 3 patron Ocean Man, who says Rest Your Mice is sorry for playing Min Min. If you want to support me using any of these methods, links are in the description below. Don't miss the shorts and streams I'm producing over the weekend, but until then, I've been Rest Your Mice, and thank you all so very much for watching.